Everybody loves the oceans. I don't know anybody that doesn't. I can't live more than several kilometers inland from the sea or I start to get really twitchy. Although everybody loves the oceans, most people don't realize we need them. Oceans are a source of protein, they regulate the climate, they provide ecotourism benefits. They're also very threatened, and the threats come from a mix of different factors. One is the presence of excessive fishing. Second, coastal pollution and the loss of habitat in coastal ecosystems. And third, the looming threat of climate change. The Packard Foundation's Ocean Vision Strategy is a strategy with the goal of restoring the health and productivity of the world's oceans. The focus of the strategy is to address three critical issues related to ocean conservation. The first is to address the need for better science and understanding of the world's oceans. And unless we get better knowledge and understanding, we're going to have a hard time conserving them. The second focus of the work is to address the excessive destructive fishing that's taking place worldwide. We focused on trying to create a demand for sustainably harvested seafood. And the third focus is on coastal conservation efforts where we've identified several regions around the world where we're working to support efforts to protect those coastal ecosystems through the creation of marine reserves and marine protected areas. We know a lot about the ocean and we know almost nothing about the ocean. Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute science activities play a fundamental role in providing science information that's used to promote ocean health that then can lead us to make better informed decisions about policy, about the sustainability of ocean ecosystems in general. The main focus of my research is to try and understand how climate change and ocean acidification affects life in the ocean. Ocean acidification will affect a variety of organisms in different ways because there are physiological challenges animals experience when they're exposed to more CO2. We're studying deep sea urchins. We look at growth, survival, reproduction, metrics of performance that give us some clue to how these animals are going to perform in the future. What we've found is they're not particularly tolerant of changes that we see. And so it suggests to us that those animals might have a problem in the future. And in turn, how is that going to play out in things that we really care about? food security, energy, all the things that we use the ocean for. Coral reefs in Fiji and in the Western Pacific and around the globe are in grave danger. They're threatened by many factors. On a local level, this is due to actions like overfishing, threats from the land, and of course everything is threatened by the overarching threat of climate change. The coral reefs in Fiji and the broader Western Pacific form the fabric of the daily lives for millions and millions of coastal residents. Locally managed marine areas simply refers to an area of reef and its adjacent waters that are managed by local people who are able to control what activities happen in those areas. My work has been mostly involving working with local communities to help them design management practices and strategies that are tailored to their needs locally. When management is effective, when communities have come together and they're implementing their management strategies, we've seen increases in the amount of fish that people can eat, increase in the amount of invertebrates. We've seen increases in the size of fish, which means that they're able to reproduce thousands and thousands of more larvae. The locally managed marine area network has grown from one community active in the late 1990s to now over a thousand communities in the broader Western Pacific. We have a planet that's going to require a 50% increase in food production within the next 20 years. We've got hundreds of millions of people wanting to eat more animal protein, including seafood. One only has to go back a relatively short time to see the change in species that people are consuming today because of sustainability issues. It's not the consumer that's driving the demand for sustainable seafood. What's really driving are the big buyers and the big buyers are exerting influence on their supply chains. When we asked our suppliers where the seafood comes from that they sell us, because we didn't know, they also, for the most part, did not know where it came from. A pretty scary thought. Getting involved with the fisheries is somewhat unprecedented. The fisheries, the fishermen, 
the harvesters, even their first processors aren't used to the large buyers getting involved, getting in the kitchen with them. We now are tracking 220 source fisheries on where our seafood comes from. In less than four years now, we've gone from virtually zero transparency to a very high level of transparency. Everyone will be affected by sustainable coastal conservation in the future. The world has become globalized. So it's not just the communities that we're thinking about in Fiji when we implement these projects, it's also how it impacts the entire world. It's clear to me that the path forward is not someone dictating something from on high up in the supply chain as a buyer to the harvesters, to the fishermen. It's really reaching out to them and having a conversation. My vision for the ocean is to have human society act as stewards of the ocean in a way that we can ensure the sustainability of all the services we gain from the ocean for future generations. If we have healthy oceans across the world, we're going to have much more diverse, productive, rich ocean ecosystems, but people are also going to be much better off. We'll have people that have enough to eat, that are able to earn a sufficient livelihood just by being close to the marine environment. We'll have a wider community that appreciates the enormous biodiversity of the sea and appreciates the fact that it will be there for their children to see in the next generation.